This lesson explains how to solve Mendelian genetics problems. We're going to start with a monohybrid cross, which is a cross between uh, two organisms with just involving one trait. Uh, we're going to repeat one of the experiments uh, Gregor Mendel did, for example. We'll use pea plants that uh, were tall, uh, purebred tall pea plants. Uh, we'll say this is in the parental generation. That implies that they're purebred. We're going to cross those with purebred short pea plants. And again, this worked for Mendel because pea plants only come in two heights. Either they're a climbing vine tall or relatively short. It's pretty easy to tell which they are. So he took his purebred tall plants, crossed them with some purebred short pea plants. Their offspring are called the F1 generation. And uh, here's how it worked. All the offspring turned out to be tall. When he collected the seeds, replanted them, all the seeds grew into tall plants. So what does that teach us? Well, first of all, that tells us that tall is dominant. Now the next step would be to uh, cross two of these F1 pea plants together, or since pea plants are uh, self-pollinating, if you just let these tall pea plants pollinate themselves, it's kind of equivalent to crossing them with another F1 tall pea plant. Then we want to know what their offspring are going to be. Turns out some of their offspring are tall, others are short. Why are, why are some of these short if you have two tall plants and yet they have short offspring? Mendel decided tall is dominant. The first step in solving a genetics problem is to determine what's dominant and recessive. Now we did that because we crossed purebred uh, pea plants and, and found out that tall was dominant. So we're going to write a key. That's the second step. Write a key. The key is going to be what letters we use to represent the genes. On our key, we'll say that tall we're going to use a capital T to represent tall. The capital will tell us that it's dominant. Lowercase t will be the, the recessive, and that's going to be short. Uh, that reminds us that it's recessive to the tall. So this is our key to start with. Uh, now the next step in solving a genetics problem the next step is to the next step in solving a genetics problem is to write the genotypes of the parents. Now remember, genotypes are what letters we use to represent dominant and recessive. So for the original tall parent in the parental generation, he's going to have big T, big T. Uh, remember, all adult organisms are going to have two copies of each gene, two sets of genes, uh, because we're all diploid organisms. The short one is going to be little t, little t. The next step in solving a genetics problem is to write the genotypes of all possible gametes from those parents. In this case, the tall plant can only make one kind of gamete. Uh, imagine that this one is the, the female, uh, so it can only make one kind of egg, a big T. Uh, remember, eggs, they're produced by meiosis, so they have half the information as the adult cells. So if the adult cell has two copies of each uh, instruction for height, two height genes, the egg's only going to have one. Now if the short parent, let's say that's the, uh, the male part that's producing the sperm, so each sperm cell will only have one little t. So there's only one possible kind of offspring. All the offspring in the F1 generation are going to be heterozygous, big T, little t. Now if we look at, if we cross two of these F1s together, that are both big T, little t, uh, let's see what their offspring are going to be. Again, we look at our steps for solving a genetics problem. Uh, we've already determined what's dominant and recessive. We've already written a key. We have the genotypes of our new parents. They're both big T, little t. And we are going to write the genotypes of all their possible gametes. The first parent, let's imagine that's the female, makes two possible kinds of eggs. Half the eggs will have a big T, and half the eggs have a little t as they go through meiosis. The second parent, being the male, makes the sperm. Half the sperm will have a big T, and half the sperm will have a little t. If it helps, you can even imagine these inside the cells. So here's the egg cells, and here's the sperm cells. 
Then we can draw a Punnett square. Inside the Punnett square, we're going to carry out the next step in solving a genetics problem. The next step is to write the genotypes of all the possible offspring. Now, if we use a Punnett square, then they line up just right, and it's easy to write the genotypes of all possible offspring. If this sperm fertilizes this egg, you get an offspring that's homozygous dominant, big T, big T. If, on the other hand, this sperm is used with this egg, you get heterozygous offspring, big T, little t. The next possibility, big T, little t. Again, heterozygous. And the last possible combinations, little t, little t. Homozygous recessive. Now this doesn't mean that these parents can only have four kids. And it doesn't mean that the first kid is going to be homozygous dominant and the next kid is going to be heterozygous. That's not how it happens. What this, what this is really saying is that these are the four possible kinds of offspring. So for example, if, if these parents had a hundred offspring, what is the probability that, that their offspring would be homozygous dominant, big T, big T? Yeah, you'd expect about one-fourth of that hundred or twenty-five. Now it might be twenty-six or twenty-eight or, you know, twenty-two. You know, somewhere close around twenty-five is what you'd expect. And again, for heterozygous, you'd expect two-fourths or one-half of the offspring to be heterozygous. That's the probability. But again, it might be, it's just close to fifty. You know, maybe fifty-three, fifty-five, or forty-seven, forty-six, somewhere close to fifty. And often in uh, solving these problems, you'll be asked for a uh, phenotype ratio. What that is, is the ratio of how many types of looks. Remember, phenotype is the expression of the genotype. It's what the organism looks like. So a phenotype ratio would be how many of each look. So for example, you have three tall, those three tall, to one short, this one. So you could express your phenotype ratio as 3 to 1. If it asks for a genotype ratio, then it would be 1 homozygous dominant, that's this one, to 2 heterozygous, these two, to 1 homozygous recessive, this one here. So a genotype ratio could be expressed as 1 to 2 to 1. Another uh, type of question you could be asked is, what is the probability of these parents having a uh, offspring that are homozygous recessive, say, for example. And you'd express that answer as 1 out of 4 or 25 percent. So this is how you solve a monohybrid genetics problem. Let's do another one just uh, as an example to review. Another experiment that Mendel did was uh, using uh, the color of the pea seeds. Uh, he took purebred green seeds Cross those with pea plants that had purebred yellow seeds. And lo and behold, it turns out that all of the offspring are yellow. All of them have yellow seeds. So what does that tell us? Yeah, that's right. The yellow seeds are dominant over green. Green's recessive. So we can add that to our key. We'll have big Y equals yellow seeds and little y equals green seeds. Now that we have our key, let's assign genotypes to our parents. The original purebred parents, they're their genotypes, and you can easily see why all of the offspring are heterozygous, getting a big Y from one parent, a little Y from the other parent. If we allow these F1 offspring to grow up and then we allow them to self-pollinate or reproduce with each other, we're going to have two heterozygotes crossed, big Y, little Y crossed with a big Y, little Y. What is our F2 generation going to look like? Well, if we take a look at our how to solve genetics problem chart again, we've already determined dominant and recessive. We've written a key. We have the genotypes of our parents. Now we, have, we need to write the genotypes of all the possible gametes. Again, we're going to divide this up to half the eggs getting a big Y, the other half the eggs getting a little Y half of the sperm getting a big Y, and half of the sperm getting a little Y. Here's our Punnett square, and filling in all of our possible offspring, which is step five in our uh, solving genetics problems. And the next step in our solving genetics problems is to write the genotypes of all possible offspring in our Punnett square. 
And here they are. Two-fourths heterozygous, big Y, little y, and one-fourth homozygous recessive, little y, little y. So we have four, again, we have four possible kinds of offspring. And if you notice, this is exactly the same pattern that we saw with the height. We just used a different gene. And this is the power of genetics. This is what Mendel saw as, as why this is useful. It's, it's a predictable pattern. For the first time in human experience, people could predict what, what uh, traits offspring would have, which can be a very valuable to understand. Now, the, of course, the next uh, thing that Mendel wanted to do was two traits at the same time. And that's uh, another lesson we'll, we'll show later.